Okay, so today we're gonna do something really, really cool. I'm gonna make a brown sauce. And to make the brown sauce, I'm gonna take the beef stock that I've already made, and I'm gonna do a rough cut uh, mirepoix. So it's not gonna be a, a nice fine dice, it's just gonna be a rough cut. And then what we're gonna do, and the mirepoix is basically um, onion, carrot, celery, not too much carrot because uh, we don't want it to be too sweet. The carrot will sweeten it too much. So it's just a nice, uh, large, rough cut on the vegetables. I'm going to sweat them, and then I'm going to add that lovely uh, beef stock that I made. And the only reason why I made beef stock and not veal stock is because I was not able to get my hands on uh, veal bones. Okay, that's my mirepoix. That's going to go in the uh, stock pot, and we're going to get them translucent, maybe get them a little color, and then we're going to add beef stock. Now, if you can't have, if you can't make your own beef stock because you don't have the time, because it took, you know, 32 hours of simmering, you can always use this. Do I see that in there? Yes. This is my favorite brand of stocks. Uh, I use their vegetable stock all the time. The beef stock's pretty good. And they make one that's unsalted. I'm not going to use this today because I'm going to use my own uh, beef stock. Um, and then we're going to make a brown sauce. And then something else magical is going to happen later after the brown sauce is done. But, you know, we'll keep you in suspense for now. Okay. So, you see, I have my little, it's not a huge stock pot, it's a small one. Ooh, wrong burner. All right, I'm going to get that going about medium heat. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil. I know you're supposed to use clarified butter, but um, you know what? No one's going to know. Um, and then, and then, you know, there it is, right? No one's going to know. And then as soon as that oil gets a little bit hot, and this is a pretty thin bottom pot, which means the oil is going to get hot pretty quickly. I'm going to add in my mirepoix and uh, once we get a little color on that then we're going to take this to the next level again we're making brown sauce today and we're making brown sauce because it is uh, I'm not going to put any seasoning in there no salt no pepper uh, the brown sauce is going to be used uh, to make something else so you know think about the math here right uh, the beef stock, or I wish I had veal bones, I could have made veal stock, same process, um, took about 32 hours, okay? And, and it didn't require my time uh, watching it constantly, but it, you know, it takes that much time, you know, it elapsed time, okay? After the veal stock or beef stock is done, you wanna make the brown sauce. Brown sauce is another couple of hours because we're gonna take that stock, which is already, you know, rich in flavor, and we're gonna reduce it um, maybe not quite in half, maybe by a third, uh, with more infused flavor, you know? And then we're going to take that sauce and make something else with it. I mean, just layer and layer of, you know, concentrated flavor. It's going to be freaking awesome. All right, this is going to be a little bit harder to do using the uh, holder because um, it's not tall enough. But you see, there's the beef stock that we made and we made, I made, and you see that layer of fat on top. We're gonna to take that, I had it in the fridge so the fat is hard. We'll take that layer of fat off, and I'm gonna take about a quart, maybe a little bit more of this, and that's what I'm gonna use in the brown stock. It's gonna be a little bit less than a quart, but not quite a pint. More than a pint, less than a quart, how about that? So there you go, so I'm gonna take that fat off. Okay, so you see I've gotten the fat off. Oh, there's a couple of little pieces there. Check this out, look at that. That's amazing, huh? Um, I mean, look at how hard that fat is. And we could use that for other things if you want. Uh, but now I'm gonna take some of this stock and I'm gonna uh, add it to the mirepoix with some aromatic herbs. And we're gonna let it simmer for a couple of hours. So you see here I took five cups, right? Just over a quart. And I'm gonna reduce that to just under a quart. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna break a few rules here and I'm gonna tell you what rules I'm breaking, 
but for right now, I haven't broken any rules yet. Alrighty, so here's the first rule I'm gonna break. Uh, you're supposed to use a sachet, right? A little cheesecloth bag filled with these herbs and probably use, you know, fresh herbs. There's my tarragon. All right, I'm just gonna use a half a teaspoon of each. Tarragon, marjoram, and thyme. Oh boy, it's a brand new thyme, so I have to get the wrapper off. Okay, close enough. Okay, those are my herbs. And I'm gonna add um, a couple of bay leaves. Right, a couple of bay leaves. So that's what's gonna go in to this mixture uh, as I simmer it. Now usually, uh, what you're supposed to do is put that in a little bag, cheesecloth, uh, so that you can pull it out. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it directly in because I'm gonna strain this before I add the roux. Um, so that's the trick, right? Usually you make the roux by putting flour in the vegetables now. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna make the roux separately and then add it later and reduce it. And that's gonna save me some straining. All right, so you can see the color coming on the onion. Mostly on the onions, the celery looks pretty green, the carrots look pretty bright. But the onions are starting to get a little bit of color and they smell uh, wonderful. And that's the thing I keep harping on, right? If Game of Thrones had smell in your living room, would you still watch it? If you come to my house, that's for shit sure. All right, so uh, just keeping an uh, eye on the clock, this is a grand total of about 15 minutes of time, right? Here's my herbs, they're going in. Okay, let me give that a quick stir. And if you can incorporate it, I like to smell the aroma of those herbs coming up with the um, with the near floor. And then here goes my five cups of this stuff. There it is. Five cups of beef stock. And like I said, I wish I had veal stock. There's nothing better than tortured baby cow, but uh, we couldn't get the veal bones. You have to special order them. Okay, and then one last thing. This is supposed to be tomato puree. I'm just going to put in a can of no salt added uh, tomato sauce. Just eight ounces of that. Um, and that's it. And we're going to let that simmer for a couple of hours. Um, once it comes to the boil, I'm going to put it on the back burner and just let it simmer for uh, two, three hours. Let it reduce and then we will move on to the next stage of this evolution, which is going to be a magnificent dish. I'm not telling you what it is yet. Okay, so it's been nearly two hours of simmering and you can almost see on the edge there, see where the line receded a bit. I'm going to give it another hour and then I'm going to strain it uh, into the measuring cup to see how much I'm left with. And then, after it's strained, I'm going to return it to the pot, after I clean the pot, and I'm going to add a roux, a dark brown roux, and that is going to thicken it. And that's how I'm breaking the rules. You know, typically, you would have to strain it after it's all assembled, but I'm going to do the roux in a separate pot and then thicken it that way, uh, because it's a, a cleaner approach and it's going to have pretty much the same effect. It's going to be a small amount of roux. It's only two ounces of flour, two ounces of butter because I'm really only doing a small, like the recipes in the books call for like five quarts of uh, stock. And I'm only doing like a quart. So I think uh, two ounces of flour, two ounces of butter to make the roux is perfect for this amount of uh, brown stock. So like we make any roux, right? It's gonna be equal parts of flour and butter. And you see how I'm just stirring it up. And I'm not going to let it burn, but I don't, I want it to be a, not a dark, dark roux, like a Louisiana, New Orleans kind of uh, Cajun cooking roux, but I want it to be a brown roux. So that means uh, right now it's kind of blonde, 
I need to cook it a little longer uh, to make it brown. And it should take me, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I don't know how long. I'll tell you exactly how long it took, though, when I'm done. Uh, and um, I'll put that and log that uh, in the record books. So uh, that's what I'm going to do for now. All right. So while that roux, the roux is cooking, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that stock that we were simmering for the brown sauce and just strain it. And then I'm going to wash this pot and let's see how much uh, we're left with. And then I'm going to continue to cook the brown sauce in that pot with the roux after the roux is ready. Alrighty, so now I have drained, you know what, I'm gonna, hold on. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this uh, strainer and uh, let it drain over a colander because there might be some more goodness in there. But let's take this camera off the stand. Now you see, I started out with five cups and I've got three cups. So I reduced it by uh, two cups. And if you look now, my roux, my roux, it only took about six minutes to get to this color. And that's the color I want. I don't want a dark, dark, dark uh, roux like for New Orleans cooking, but I do want a brown roux. Uh, put a little light on the subject. I'm gonna take that stock and put it back in the pot that I washed. All right, so now I've got all the impurities out of it. I'm gonna bring that to a boil and once it's boiling, I'm going to add the roux and whisk it in. And that is going to pretty much immediately uh, thicken it. And then I'll just cook it for maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then we're done. The brown sauce is done. And that is going to be the next step in what we're doing today. Alrighty, so a couple of things are going to happen here. Um, you see how the uh, sauce is now uh, getting to a simmer. Now this, based on that amount of sauce, is too much roux. I just know that it's too much. So I'm only gonna take a little bit of the roux and add it in. I'm not gonna take it all. And I could use the rest of that roux later uh, for uh, stage two or stage three of what we're doing. And you see I've just got a nice little whisk because I don't want this sauce to be too thick. I want it to be thickened, but not too thick. Now, and remember also, uh, we didn't put uh, any salt or pepper in this at all, right? So it's just um, a reduction of uh, beef stock and a second dose of mirepoix and aromatics, and we just reduce it. So th that flavor should be very concentrated. Let's see if we can see how thick it is. Because maybe I will add a little bit more roux. Okay, let's take a look. So you see how that consistency, maybe a little bit more roux is what we need. So I'll take a little bit more. Okay, and now we'll whisk it up again. That's it. So now I'm just gonna simmer this brown sauce for, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, and um, it's done. And I'm gonna use it later on in what we're doing. You know what I'm gonna do though? I wanna take a quick little taste. Let's see. Well, I will say, even though I didn't use a lot of carrot, it's a bit sweet. So maybe I should have used less carrot. Um, but again, there's no salt or pepper in that. So when it gets seasoned, it's gonna take on a different flavor as well. But I think it's a, it's a wonderful sauce. All right, you see it on the back burner. All right, it's on a very low flame. I'm gonna let it simmer, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and then it's done. And uh, you see how I cheated um, but I don't think the finished product would be a whole lot different 
if I didn't cheat. Um, I just kind of changed the order of my operations a little bit. 